how to get your videos ranked on Google, YouTube, utilizing these few hacks. And in this video, I'm gonna show you an actual case study of a highly competitive keyword that I got onto the first page on Google as well as YouTube. And what are the different things that you can model and reverse engineer so that you can do it for your content as well as your videos. Now, very recently, I noticed that on my Instagram DM as well as emails, I've been getting every single email from random people saying, Hey Ping Jun, could you help me get verified on Instagram? I don't mind paying you. And I noticed that when I looked at some of their profiles, I noticed that they were really, really serious leads. They could be people from, from all over the world with hundreds and thousands of followers. And I was just really curious to where they all came from. And I noticed that when I went to Google and I typed in how to get verified on Instagram, one of the things that I noticed is this. I noticed that there was a video of mine that was ranked on the first page on Google. And this was literally when I just cleared my cookies. Now, but by the time you watch this, I don't know if I'll still be number one, but this was the exact video. And when I looked at this video, it was just this one super simple video that I uploaded four months, five months ago. And this video now has 73,000 views. And most importantly, in this video, I'm also going to walk you through why just one video that ranks well could be a game changer for you as well as your business. Okay, so this one video here, not only does it rank on the first page on Google, but same thing here, I went to Google and as well as YouTube rather, I typed in how to get verified on Instagram. And after clearing my cookies, I noticed that I was on the first page, but on number three. So what did I do for this one video that did well? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the details of this video, how we optimized it and what worked and what are some of the things that I might do differently if I could do it all over again. So one of the things that we always do is this used to make a much bigger difference like a decade ago, but we still do it now as part of our best practice is whenever you upload a file, your raw file. So notice that even my raw file that is uploaded online, it is optimized based on the keyword that we want to rank for. So one of the things that is said, nobody really has solid proof for this, but there's no harm in doing it. Rather than uploading the raw file as the random file name, which could be like MOV13576, rename the file to be based upon the keyword that you want to rank for. I know that a decade ago or five years ago, it made a much bigger difference. Today, there's less weightage, but again, there's no harm in you just renaming it and uploading it because now at least YouTube has a rough gauge to what your video is all about. So for me personally, it starts with the keyword research. What is the keyword that you want to rank for? And I always like to kind of mix two different angles which is usually once the keyword and making it keyword rich as the title, but a title that is just keyword rich is usually boring. So I like to merge that with some sort of hook, some sort of attention grabber, okay? So you'll notice that over here, the title over here is how to get verified on Instagram, which is the main keyword, which is what people are searching for. You wanna always begin with the end in mind. What is the main keyword that you're targeting? And then the second element is how can you actually mix it with a good hook, a good pattern interrupt, something that makes people want to click. So for, for me, this would be the actual criteria Instagram uses to approve you. So this video over here is a mix of these two things, right? So that's, that's the first one. How can you determine and begin with the end in mind, reverse engineer, by understanding what is the keyword that you're targeting? Think about merging it with something that makes them want to click on it. So this would be like, five things you never knew about topic name, three mistakes that you are making right now. So it's, it's, it's not really something that people are searching for, but it makes it a little bit more juicy so that in the sea of competitors of other content creators trying to target and rank for the same keyword, ask yourself what makes it stand out? Because what makes it stand out now, if I were to go to the analytics, is you will see that 
how you look and think about these type of videos, the reason why these videos are so different, and I'm gonna show you the numbers over here and, and what made this video take off over time. You can see like we are about 138 days in, so three, six, nine, twelve, five 12, five months in, right? It's doing exceptionally well and the reason why like i love youtube videos and i was late to the game as you can see my following here on youtube is nowhere like facebook or instagram i didn't pay attention on youtube for so many years is number one i didn't pay attention to it but the biggest mistake that i made was not seeing how a youtube video when optimized the right way is kind of like real estate where you invest in it one time and you get to create rent on it for life. Where else on Facebook, on the other hand, if you create a piece of content, if it doesn't take off organically in 24 to 48 hours, chances are it'll never take off. So for this over here, because it was optimized correctly, as it got discovered, it got more and more views over time. And I believe that a topic like this would be pretty much evergreen and it would continue to grow over the next couple of years until there's a huge dramatic shift in the verification process if they actually change it. Now, there's a couple of things that YouTube looks at in order to determine whether they want to continue giving more visibility to a specific video. One factor that they look at is audience retention. Now, this retention rate of 26%, to be honest, it's, it's not high. I think it's it's average. In fact, it might be even slightly below average. And you can see, I'm gonna show you all of the numbers here. You can see that a lot of it came from the YouTube search. Again, people are searching on YouTube, searching on Google. So from the search itself, one of the things that I always do to increase retention is, and you'll notice my earlier videos, I, I would normally not do this, but I would sell people on why they should watch till the end. So retention is huge. YouTube's always judging the quality of your content based on how long people are staying on the video. It is YouTube's purpose to keep people on YouTube for all eternity. And if you can help them do that, that is when they will want to show your YouTube videos even more. So what I always do is because people tend to drop out a lot in the first minute of a video. So what I always do is sell them on why they need to stay till the end. So just like this video, as well as a lot of my recent videos, I always say things like, and by the way, if you watch till the end of this video, you'll discover why, pay off, pay off, pay off. And if you don't understand this, you'll be making mistake, mistake, mistake. So now there's some sort of reason to want to watch and stay till the end. So just like by the end of this video, if you stay till the end of this video, you'll discover what it takes to truly rank videos on the first page on Google and YouTube that will help you get more visibility, help you get more leads and to convert these leads into sales, right? So this is kind of like the hook that I utilized to increase your retention. This over here, retention is okay, it's not over the top, but what I did as well is we'll look into some of the numbers here. This is the next piece here, okay? So I'm gonna be very transparent here and you can see that a lot of our views uh, came from the main keyword, which is how to get verified on Instagram. And you can see that that's like 20, a, a quarter of it all came from here. And by the way, you can see a YouTube search alone was 45,000 views. So can you imagine if you created this one piece of content and it continues to grow over time as more people are searching for it on YouTube? Again, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. The number one search engine in the world, which is Google, owns the number two search engine in the world. Over a decade ago, they bought YouTube for like a billion dollars. People thought they were crazy back then. But what if you could have that mindset of, look, even if you created a YouTube video right now and nobody sees it, but the mindset is really to understand that this YouTube game is a marathon, not a sprint. And even though I was late to the game, that's how I'm looking at it now. It's something that's gonna be evergreen the moment you have these type of videos that takes off. So why is it such a profitable move? It's this, it's because like literally, every single day I'm getting these leads saying, hey man, I don't know if you do this as a service, but I'd love to be able to pay you if you could help me get verified. And there's a lot of people I see that are influencers, authors, coaches, business owners that wanna get verified so that, I don't know if it's like a status symbol, that, that's, that could be one, 
or so that it's harder for people to have identity theft. So think about these type of keywords that people are willing to pay money for. And when I look at services out there, again, people are charging from 5K to 50K with the average pricing of about 10,000 per project to get help people get verified. So if, if I wanted to, this is not in line with my core business, I could easily monetize this by having some sort of application page, get leads in, set up a new side hustle, help people get verified, or I could easily get and work with somebody that already does this as a service and just refer them over and get paid every time I refer and get, get some sort of kickback if I wanted to. But it's not in line with my main business, I'm not doing that. But this is to show you and hopefully inspire you on the power of having one video take off. So what else? How else can we increase and allow YouTube to want to continue getting people to see our stuff? So the next one is the thumbnail. That's right. So over here, you can see this is the thumbnail. The reason why thumbnails are so crucial is because I noticed that till today, there are a lot of people that don't take the time to either get somebody who's good at thumbnail creation to create a really good custom thumbnail. Because if you are utilizing some sort of random thumbnail that is created on YouTube from you, here's what happens, okay? YouTube will set some default thumbnail of you having your eyes closed, doing something really stupid halfway and pause like this as a thumbnail. And that's not gonna make people wanna click. Now, first of all, let's talk about why is it important to get a good thumbnail and then how to do it. So you notice that the impression click-through rate over here is 8.1%. Now this is considered pretty good, it's above average. How does a YouTube video get discovered? Two ways, right? When people are doing a search on Google, or number two, when it appears on YouTube as a recommended or suggested video on the right-hand side. What makes people wanna click? Purely based on your thumbnail. And so yes, people do judge your videos based on your thumbnail. And the click-through rate is what is going to determine and allow YouTube to decide if they wanna continue showing it to more people. So 8.1 is pretty good. And this thumbnail over here, the way my team creates these thumbnails is utilizing this. It's basically, how do you tell what you say on the title without saying the same thing on the title? The title is how to get verified on Instagram. So for us, it is how do we show that visually without saying the same thing again. Because if you're saying the same thing again, which is having the words of how to get verified on Instagram appear, then it would be wasting prime real estate space. On top of that, we are also looking at competition, which is basically who are the other people that's getting ranked and what do their thumbnails look like so that we can be different. So we do not get drowned in the sea of sameness. So over here, I can see that there are other people with 1.1 million views. Okay, so this obviously works. But if I were to model back this layout, this color scheme, I'm just gonna be drowned in this sea of sameness, okay? So my team is constantly thinking, how do we have something different? And the SOP, the standard operating procedure that they would adopt is to have an image that says, the same thing without saying the same words. Okay, that's what you want to be doing as well. So this, from the image alone, you can see that it's, what does it imply? It's implying in that you get the blue tick from this. That is probably what allowed us to get a much higher click-through rate, 8.1%, that makes YouTube want to continue showing it to more people and allowing it to grow over time and that is why you see this evergreen slope that is on the upward trend that will continue to rise probably for quite a while if you like this video let me know in the comments below what you learned what your biggest takeaway is and then as always be sure to smash the like button because it does help the channel out and subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell notification button if you like videos just like this one my name is ping jun and i will see you in the next video